coming up on Theater Talk. The extraordinary thing about this show is that we talk, we, you know, we look at, we look at a certain time very fondly of, of a certain president. Mm. And now we're in a new, we're in a new reality. A new sure. time. Even when this Hamilton first came out, it was a real celebration of the world that we're in, how, how modern the world is moving. Mm. And now in the wake of what we are in now, it's a conversation about if you don't like where you are, go and change the world. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation and the Honorable Thomas Mercer Ray. <laughs> Patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action's an act of creation. I'm laughing in the face of casualties of sorrow. For the first time I'm thinking past tomorrow. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins, and I am so delighted to welcome my extra special guest co-host, Julie Halston, star of Broadway TV and Off-Broadway. And we are so delighted tonight. We are welcoming the new stars of Hamilton. We are joined by Brian Terrell Clark, George Washington, Daniel Breaker, the tormented Aaron Burr, and Mandy Gonzalez, who's killing it as they are, are they all as Angelica Hamilton. Well, not Hamilton, Angelica Skyler. Skyler. Yes. You know, I went to sc high school with a boy named Philip Schuyler. Who, oh, was, really? who was a descendant, and he wow. said, he, he's a college teacher, and he said that the uh, development director keeps looking at him now. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, Julie. <laughs> why don't you sure. have more oh, money, yeah, Philip? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he keeps saying. Why don't you have more money to give to us? Right, right. <laughs> You're a descendant <laughs> of the Skyler. The right. man is loaded. Right. 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 Well, I, I have to say, first of all, I'm happy to be here, but se second of all, I, I was so thrilled to see the show uh, again, and with these magnificent, and I have to say, because I'm a jaded, you know, right. actress, um, <laughs> I was astounded once again by the show. It's a masterpiece. We know it's yeah. a masterpiece, but mm -hmm. then you go back and you go, okay, well, is it really a masterpiece? Yeah. It really is. Yeah. But let me ask you guys, when you came into the show, what, because you had seen the show, I mm -hmm. imagine, mm -hmm. <laughs> what surprised you? about the show that you hadn't thought of before or that you found more daunting that you, you know, maybe didn't realize was gonna be a little more daunting than something else? You know, I, I saw the show and I'm really good friends with Leslie Odom Jr. and, a, and a, a few of the other cast members and I saw the show for the first time and I literally called my agents and said, do not submit me for this show. Were you playing Marvin Gaye in Motown at that time? I, I had just finished playing Marvin. Okay. And I thought to myself, I saw the show and I just thought, if I go in to audition for this, I am going to literally make every choice that Leslie Odom Jr. made, <laughs> and I won't be as good because I'll be doing a version of Leslie, so leave it alone. So then when they called and said, well, they want you to be seen for Washington, I went, huh, let's go for it. Okay. And, and I love Chris, too, who's a phenomenal performer. And um, Chris Jackson. Chris Jackson, for those. who we love. And he booked Bull, the TV show, and there was this opportunity to come to come and audition for the show. And and the thing that surprised me was I had never been placed into a show before. Okay. Now, you know what I mean. Uh, I do. It is, I do. It is so terrifying, mm -hmm. especially yeah. a show like Hamilton, because it is such. I mean, everything is choreographed and directed within an inch of its of its life because it, because the, it just moves. There's so many people. There's a turntable, and you're on stage the whole. Oh yeah, there's time. not a margin for error. There's not yeah. a margin no. for error. No. And so I learned it in a studio with you know some some resources and some help. But essentially, you're in there with tape on the floor. Yes. Learning Hamilton, alone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so you're Terrifying. That's daunting. Who, who terrifying. is directing you? Is Tommy Kale around or is Tommy Kale was around? Yeah. Um, we have uh, we have an amazing. That's another thing I want to take time to thank all of our support 
system. We Patrick have great, um, yeah, we have great associate directors and associate music directors that mm -hmm. that help us. So you're definitely not alone. And Tommy and Lackmore and Lynn have left us in good hands because their support Amazing. team is phenomenal. Now, yeah. You started this show in ch Chicago. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I joined it in Chicago uh, back in February. My experience was slightly different in that, like, in, in the rehearsal room, I was bored. I was like, let's just answer <laughs> these questions on the stage. Uh -huh. so, something that was really extraordinary about this show in particular is that it is a perfectly made play, right? It's a well-made play, and it's mm -hmm. quite intricate from viewing it, and even when you're on stage, it is also, the, the mechanism is, is brilliant, right? From the choreography to the set to the lighting, right? But somehow it is still loose and freeform, mm -hmm. sure. right? I, and that, that was a remarkable thing. I think that really goes to the creative team uh, really wanting to celebrate the individual that takes mm -hmm. on the role. This is the second time I've, I've joined a company. I was on Book of Mormon for three years, and that was, that was where I joined, the I joined the company there. But, but this one really celebrates like, your individual take on And I on the noticed part. blocking changes. There yeah. are little changes like all the time. We meet every uh, Tuesday before the show for, we call it the Constitutional Convention the con and con. the Con Con. Yeah. And we meet and we have notes from every team and sometimes there's changes to music or to the dance, like little food yeah, things. Just little, little stars. adjustments. That would be the associate uh, choreographers, some of the dance captains that's led by stage, stage management, the MD, right. just stuff. I mean, it's, it's a living, breathing so thing, connect. right? So yeah. it plays sort of two things beautifully. It's like you right. have 30 minutes to just check in, New announcements, who's leaving, who's, who's pregnant, my birthday, right. like that that sort of checking in. <laughs> right, right. Um, usually I'm bringing food. Dollar wins, uh, yeah. Right. No, dollar wins, yeah. 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 Friday. Right, right. right. What bored you in the rehearsal then before you got to the... Well, I've, I find that my access into into any role is really relationships with the with the people on stage. Uh, sure. and, and it was very hard for me to just like sit around and like look at tape and somebody say, well, a chair is going to fly this way. It's oh, like, well, I need to know, I need oh. to know that. Let me know that when it actually happens. So... We had four weeks of rehearsal, but it really sort of came down to just two weeks. Because huh. it was just a matter of like, I, I, want, I want to get up there and do. Yes. And that's also very different for Burr, because Burr is uh, the puppeteer for, uh, to a certain extent. No, you're right. the center. And, you're the narrator. And, yeah. and, and yeah. Those, all those questions are really answered in the doing. Mandy, you bring an entirely different take to Angelica's. Oh, thank you. Tyler, did you think I'm going to do it differently, or did just, that just no, evolve? No, I, I think that it just evolves. I think it's what Daniel said. Tommy Kale really leaves room for the individual to kind of come through. And uh, I think that my take on Angelica and who I am right now and what I've been through in my life, it all plays within the character. I thought what was so magnificent, because again, we're watching these new pre people bring life into this fantastic masterpiece, but I saw things I had not seen the first time. Mm. The first time I think I was so aware of the phenomenon Mm, yeah. This yeah. time, I actually got the story, the play, uh, the relationships were, were, were very different. Mm -hmm. I got the torture of Aaron Burr in a very different way. George Washington, I don't know, somehow you illuminated it in a different way for me as well. And the relationship between you and Hamilton has a different resonance. Mm. Uh, yes. Now, I do want to bring up one point. We, we, we talk about that we got to go back. Mm -hmm. That the one thing I, I feel terrible about Hamilton is it's not generally accessible mm -hmm. to most people. No. Not mm -hmm. only because it's SRO, it's going to be around for a very long time, people so they get there, but also mm -hmm. it's so expensive. This is not your doing. But you were talking about how they are reaching out to mm -hmm. student groups yes. yeah. and yeah. Uh, to, to some degree trying to make it at least possible for some people yeah. to, who can't afford, a, you I know. Think Lynn, uh, yeah. I think that's a very- Tell us about that. No, yeah. I think that's a very important thing for Lynn and for the producers that they want to reach out to the next generation mm -hmm. to come and see this show that is about America, yeah. that's about our founding fathers and stuff that they're studying right now so that they can see themselves so on stage. what the, you were telling me that the other day you did it for a group of uh, yeah they call, it's called an Edgeham yeah so what, what and goes on it's there? Uh, 11th graders from uh, different New York City public schools uh -huh. yeah. they mm -hmm. come and uh, they get to see a matinee and it's a regular matinee we're all there and uh, what the wonderful thing is is that they have to write a piece before they they come to the show and they're if their piece gets selected they get to go on stage they so they come at like 10 o'clock and they yeah. perform for us. And their, oh. and their peers. And so they have to 
also see what it's like to get up in front of people. Their peers have to be supportive. They have to learn what that's like to support one another. The extraordinary thing about the Edgeham is that it is, and these, these student matinees, is that they are the it is the most sustainable form of outreach I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when, when schools, uh, when theaters talk about, oh, we're gonna do a student matinee, we're gonna bring some kids out, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lasting effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, can, I know the endless amounts of uh, Shakespeare plays that I've, that I've done with student matinees where they are just checked out, right? But what Lynn and his father have really believe in is sustainable, development. And Lynn Southern's a politician. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, in the long run, from a producer's point of view, it's, it, you're, you're making more, you're making theater goers. Mm -hmm. You're keeping it alive. And it's a real thrill because the kids will tell you how they feel. And if they don't believe something, they will let you know that they don't believe it. But what's extraordinary, they're talking and they're, they're raucous. And when, like the, when, when people kiss, they're ooh. And when the kid, somebody dies, they're like, uh. But, but they're engaged. They are fully engaged for three hours. And it's also extraordinary that my, the majority of kids in that, in that audience could not afford these tickets. No right? way. But, but at <laughs> one Wednesday every month, you have, per production, you have a bunch of public school kids that are seeing the show. My last Edge of Ham in Chicago in May, all three productions were doing Edger Hams at the same time, so you had like 5,000 oh, kids that's that were witnessing yeah, um, a, a history and, and, and also seeing people that are their complexion on, on stage. I hosted one and literally afterwards I was in my dressing room almost in tears because one, because these are students who I believe they get free lunch at these schools, I believe they're Title I schools, and not only that, but I remembered seeing a performance in high school mm -hmm. of a reverse race version of Othello and it was the moment <laughs> in high school when I went, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And to be engaged with these students who are not just watching the show, but many of them performing on the stage. And by the way, they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm blown I away bet. about and how- What kind of thing are they doing on the stage? They're rapping, yeah. they are singing, mm -hmm. all of these pieces they have written themselves. At dawn, the streets of Boston were on fire. Dancing. They're dancing, yeah. they're skits. You know, Oscar Eustace did talk about the fact that he looks at Lynn as our Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he is wrong uh, because, as we see, he took the vernacular of the way people are talking, communicating, rapping, creating, and giving it to the public. It's almost as if it's the globe. Yes. And you have different sections or whatever, but people are reacting in real time mm -hmm. to this story. Yeah. And it's our story, but it has to do with the past, so right. it's almost like a Shakespearean a historical. Yeah. Also, I think that because it's so Shakespearean, that is what attributes to this idea of being able to see the show multiple times with different people playing the roles. I mean, we've all seen Hamlet. We love Hamlet, we know what the story is. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. reason you go see Hamlet now is because you want to see that actor's take. Now, you were telling us a great story about when you first came into the show. Please yes. tell us that story. My first night in, in this life-changing experience of a show. Um, after you passed the audition. After I passed the seven auditions. Seven auditions. <laughs> um, seven I mean, auditions. Well, the, like, so, so those of you out there who like want to, you know, want to do this Broadway thing, I mean, you know, we know. Yes. Buckle up. Let's talk about the audition experience. Okay, oh. so here's the thing. <laughs> I, I went through maybe two rounds of auditions, but each round has stopping points. So you go in, you know, the first time I went in was probably a version of a pre-screen with, with casting. And then you get in with the creatives, and then if the creatives like you, then you usually go to a work session that's really getting you ready for producers. Oh, yes. And then you walk into a room with these creatives that you've connected with and a wall of suits oh. behind them. Yeah. And I went through that experience, uh, I would say, the first time, and then Chris didn't leave the show. So I wasn't sure all of the details, but I knew that he was still in it, and mm. so there was no space to be occupied. <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew that they were auditioning for the coming tour, which was Chicago, and then the tour that went right after, which was Angelica. I didn't know the second time what I was auditioning for. Am I wow. being asked to go on the road? Is this for Broadway? Right. And so I went through another round of auditions, which was about three this time. And I had um, a, a midlife crisis actor breakdown moment uh, right before my last audition. Uh, my managers called me and I was on my way to do some writing in L.A. And they said, hey, I know you're getting on a flight tomorrow. 
Oh, it's always tomorrow. It's, it's, yeah. always. it's, it's, it's always it's within solid. 24 hours, isn't it? Yeah, when do you yeah. want me to come in? Right, right. you want me to yeah. change my flight? That's in a couple hours, right. Yeah. So they said, well, we really want you to stay because uh, Hamilton wants to see you again. And I lost my mind. Yeah. I was in these Harlem streets <laughs> losing it. I, I literally was like, they want to see me again. They've seen me so many times. Yeah. What else am I going to do different yeah, yeah, in the room? Well, like, am I juggling? Am I, what am I doing? Am I doing yeah. it on my head? Like, act. They were like, well, no, this time it's for producers. I was like, but the producers saw me last time, I think. I don't know. So I was losing it, and uh, my, my manager just laughed at me. She goes, I got a good feeling about this. Postpone the flight. And uh, wow. yeah, crazy. And at the time, you know, uh, I was that actor in between gigs, and so it, I didn't have the money to just book another flight. So I, oh. it was also the day we voted. I think that was the day. Yeah, yeah, it was the day we this last election. A lot of different election. things coming together. Yeah. yeah. So it was an emotional day. We were waiting to see, you know, what the results would be, and I was being asked to stay longer, and I was just a wreck. And I took a shower and boohoo cried. I, I, by the way, I think that every adult should have one moment a year where you just have the ugly cry. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. It'll cleanse your spirit. So I've heard. <laughs> You can, so I've heard. you can think clearly and go and book your, you know, Broadway show. So I had the ugly cry, and I got out of the shower, and my, my friend Jamie calls me, and she, and she goes, hey, Brian, and I said, hey, what's up? And she had the ugly cry. Oh. I said, well, what is happening? And she goes, I'm graduating from flight school. She had this, like, big midlife crisis and quit her job and became a flight attendant. It was like a okay. moment. And um, she goes, my family can't make it to my graduation. Um, and I'm gonna be down here alone. But this is more than just the job for me. This is like a, me starting over. Um, and I really just wish someone could be there. And I said, well, I'm supposed to go to LA tomorrow and they want me to stay for this thing. And she goes, oh, you're my flight companion. And I went, what? She goes, you can fly to LA, do what you need to do, fly back for your audition, fly down here and be with me <laughs> for my graduation, and then fly back and you can do all of that for free. Okay. Here's what's funny about I want to know Jamie's number. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jamie's now, number. Here's what's crazy. Maybe she got that job just so that I can get Hamilton because she no longer works for that airline anymore. <laughs> She's not a flight it attendant was, anymore. It was it, higher power. But before we run out of time, then I, the election happened. The election yes, happened. it did. I get the job. Uh, yes. And then my first day, my first day on the stage performing as George Washington, uh, I get emotional thinking about it now, was Barack Obama's last speech in Chicago. And uh, I was, there's this moment where I'm walking downstage singing one last time right before we get to what I now call the gospel ending. And, uh, <laughs> and I looked out in the audience and people started weeping. Mm. And I think we had a collective yes. moment because I think mm -hmm. we all realized at that moment that this was the last time yes. that we would really be hearing from Barack Obama as president. Mm -hmm. This was this was yeah. his this was his one last time speech. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to be playing George Washington whose idea it was to only do two terms, knowing that our president was going to be stepping down for yeah. from his it was an emotional moment that I will never forget. I don't yeah. care what yeah. happens in my career yeah. after this. Yeah. It was a, yeah. it was a serendipitous moment that was People extremely... stood up thoughts on the most meaningful moments for you. Do you have one? A quick off of this. I mean, I, the extraordinary thing about this show is that we talk. We you know we look at we look at a certain time very fondly of, of a certain president, mm. and and now we're now we're in a new we're in a new reality. A new sure. time. But but what's extraordinary about being a part of the show is that it still it survives time. Like like Hamilton is passing through time. Maybe when this Hamilton first came out, it was a real celebration of 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 the the world that we're in. This like and and how and how how modern the world is moving. Mm. And now in the wake of what we are in now, it's a conversation about if you don't like where you are, go and change the world. Yes. yes. Yeah, right. we're getting, it gives us hope. It also gives us context of yeah. like, yes, this is, the same thing was happening in Hamilton's times where people were, were, were wild with, with, yeah. with yes. polarizing anger. It can't yes. get and, worse than this, yeah, or, you and, know, yeah, like, right. and we are, it we can't we get are, more exciting. Exactly. Yeah, we, history does repeat itself in a very interesting way. But Hamilton was a Federalist, <laughs> I mean, yeah. he had some beliefs that, you know, actually if you analyze them, you'd go, oh, I don't oh. know about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. Now, in terms of like, think, uh, what, what, this uh, what this show means to me yeah. is really what it means to my children. My nine-year-old couldn't really see Book of Mormon. That wasn't really. <laughs> like, that oh, and why then, not? <laughs> and of course, what that show, what what this show means for me as an artist, is is an extraordinary thing. But really, what it is to see my my son, Rory, who is nine now, who is mixed race and is dealing with all of the de the, the developments that come with that age and and identity and being of two 
of, of two cultures and to see him in the audience see this sea of black and brown on stage means, um, it, it just, it means quite a bit. It's a very important uh, thing to be a part of and it makes me very proud to be a father. It makes me very proud to, to be, be playing a, a complex role as a black male. I'm not quite often given the opportunity to. It is a joy to come to work. I mean, like getting off the train and seeing the, the sun setting and walking around the street. Mandy, you knock off that, knock off. You do the incredible number, Satisfied. Yes. And which is, um, I mean, I read uh, Jeremy McCarter's book on how that song was constructed. I recommend that book highly, mm -hmm. you know, and how that song was constructed. Mm -hmm. But, and you were in In the Heights, in yeah. a very important role. Mm -hmm. But how much work on yourself did you have to do to be able to master that very complex uh, song structure? I think the wonderful thing about that song is that it, does the work for you. Mm. It's such a masterpiece mm. and it's like a play within a play. But so still, you have a lot of stuff you have to be doing. Yeah. yeah. When I first saw the show at the public, I was like, oh, I love this and how do I, how can I be a part of it? Because I know Lynn mm. and the creative team so well, when Lynn was putting together his concert at Lincoln Center, uh, the Hamilton mixtape, concert, his songbook series, um, he wanted to do like six songs from Hamilton. And so he had called me to come and sing, um, which now became Mariah Reynolds. I think it was Mariah Reynolds' song, but it was just songs just mm -hmm. in the concert form. And so to see, Satisfied had, didn't exist yet, and to see all of these songs that he, that he had been working on for all that time during In the Heights and then in between In the Heights and, and to see how far it had come at the public, it was like, mind-blowing and so when I when the soundtrack came out I bought it and I was doing a lot of concerts at the time so I was traveling a lot and I don't like to fly so um, I would put on Hamilton whenever like turbulence happened which is like every flight and I would try to learn satisfied like just putting it out there I want to learn this song and then when I when Tommy called me and offered me the job wow. Um, and I went in for my first rehearsal. I was lucky because um, Karen Olivo, who played it, and who's a really good friend of mine, and played it in Chicago. Far, yeah. yeah, she had to go and do a concert um, out of town. And so Tommy Kale called and said, do you want to come and rehearse with the Chicago company mm. before they go? So I really got the whole experience of like working mm. with a company. And, and you uh. didn't even have to go through the auditions that, that this guy did. I didn't. <laughs> I went through a lot with that creative team <laughs> beforehand, a lot of different auditions. So you paid I your dues. I paid my dues, and um, they since have become uh, incredible supporters of mine. And and so I, when he gave, when he called me, it was like so many, so many things. Like you remembered me, and you know, so how hard I had been working up to that point just to get back on the boards after having my child. So I felt completely just honored to be a part of it. But I learned satisfied in the plane. I got to rehearsal and I realized I was saying a lot of the words wrong. <laughs> because I learned the rap just from like listening to it. Right. I didn't read but anything. Who knew? Right. But who knew? <laughs> and the great thing was is that I was able to work with Alex um, during the rehearsal. So he was like, it's actually, you're not saying that, you're saying this. And then it became, oh, this is what she's saying mm -hmm. and this is what it means. And so I think um, having that was so, was so wonderful but the storytelling is there. And to master that language was difficult, but everything else was easy, you know, because I don't have to think about the notes. I don't have to think about any of that because the storytelling is so, so strong, yeah. so vivid. We have one minute left, a final thought. Well, I would love to know, Mandy, has Angelica inspired you? Because she's pretty inspiring. <laughs> she is, you know. She's an um, upstanding woman. You know, when I was, doing research for Angelica, I saw a painting of her. And in that painting, she's trying to look at the, at the artist, but at the same time, she has her child that uh, the woman that's watching her child is trying to hand her. So she's trying to get her child, but also looking at, at, the, um, looking at the artist. And so I think that there's something that I learned just from that. And it's that she wanted to have a voice and she wanted to have her duty and her family, but she also was, had, yeah. vision and had this goal out there yes and so I think that for me she was fearless and so I've tried to kind of incorporate that within my own life as a mother and as a as a working mom mm -hmm. to not feel to know that there's been other women before me 
that have come and had to strive and work a lot harder. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep pushing. And so for me, it, it, that inspired me. Well, mm -hmm. the new stars of Hamilton, we are so delighted to see you here. Daniel Breaker, Mandy Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and Brian Terrell Clark, thank you so much. Thank it's you so much. Hamilton, the new generation. It's <laughs> Hamilton, the new generation. And thank you so much. Oh, I had Julie so much Halston. It was fantastic being my here. Dear. <laughs> my dear. My dear. All right. Mm -hmm. So I love them. We'll see you next time on Theater Talk. Sean Chapman! All right. All right, my name is Sean. Um, I'm wearing purple to represent my school, Impact. And I'm going to do a rap. Uh, about the revolution, so let's get it. <clears throat> Yo, King George, I got something to say. Y'all ready to pay? Because we're the USA. Uh, former British territory, freedom making our own history. Finally, we are liberated. Pesky Brits exacerbated. Going back at all our woes. Don't forget our black heroes. Part of G-Dub's ragtag army. Setting scenes is my specialty. Let's go there. Back up, George, your old news. If you're feeling sad, cry to your booze. We now own this nation, fueled by irritation, equal in creation, happiness we're chasing. Your cutlasses are rusty, red coats getting dusty. Shaking in the boots, we're taking out your loots, running for the hills, riding out the bills, and now we'll set this country free from King George's tyranny. You will not own this spot. U.S. is taking your slot. Raise those flags up on those poles. Show this world we're animals. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.